Uh, how's everyone doing? We're doing good. good. Um, this uh, this coronavirus is uh, is something else, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. We have one in Lakeland Regional that is 88 years old that was um, quarantined today. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. oh. And one in one in Jacksonville that passed away of it. Oh wow. Elderly. They were saying tonight that um, actually they have uh, the National Guard that's going to be assisting with the testing in Broward County because Broward County has over 380 cases. Wow. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. So let's just give um, everyone a few more minutes to, to join in. Um, you know, a lot of the churches have closed up, everything's online. I'd be willing, you know, if they'd close my job, just let me work from home. <laughs> yep. It don't work that way. Unfortunately, I have one of those jobs that it causes job security. Mm -hmm. It's a shame. I mean, I, I, I can tell you uh, it's, it's definitely a perk to work from home. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, yep. I'm, I'm in the corrections field. Oh, so um, unfortunately, I can't work from. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, you cannot. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, then you got to be around all those people that have all the cuties. <laughs> well, and that's the whole thing. You know, we're no. getting we're getting inmates and offenders that are being moved from institution to institution or from county jail to institution. And you you just don't know. Mm hmm. So yeah. aren't they checking them before they move them from one institution to another? I would think they're checking for fever and Yeah, but if you're somebody who you know overall is relatively healthy, you may not even know you have it. Yes, that's true. I heard that I think they reiterated that again tonight on the news that mm -hmm. some of the people don't even have any symptoms until days Right. later after they've already been out in public and everything because they had no symptoms exactly like i work in a in a probation office oh and they have closed our office to offenders coming into the office to where our probation officers actually have to go out to see the offenders but you know the officers are still coming back into the building oh. so if they've contracted going yeah. to going to offenders homes or offenders jobs yeah. they're coming right back into the building where we are so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, just teenagers. <laughs> like a two-year-old yep yeah. all right i think um it's probably a good time for us to get started um yeah. And what we can do as people join the call, uh, we can accommodate for them. So um, thank you everyone for making the time and being here. Um, I was really looking forward to meeting everyone and being on site, but um, Shannon and I were going back and forth and thought it might just be best um, to go ahead and do it web-based and then everything shut down, <laughs> right? So that kind of worked out, um, uh, Shannon. But maybe what we can do, we can table that for a future date. You know, because right. I, I live in Clearwater, I'm in Pinellas County, so it's only a, an hour or so drive for me to be where I'm at to where the school is. So I would definitely love to, to meet everyone. Um, since we have a small group of folks here, where is um, or what um, industries uh, does everyone 
uh, work in. I'll start myself. Um, I've been in HIM recruitment uh, for close to 10 years. I first worked for K-Force Healthcare, um, now known as Imagine, and I hired people from coding positions, coding manager positions, auditors, um, all over the country, skilled nursing facilities, um, long-term acute care. I then got recruited from that position, actually just started recruiting at Modal. Modal is no longer and modal because large part of the company was bought by 3M. Um, and now they have the services of coders, the transcriptionists, and medical scribes um, in a new company called Acuity Solutions. Um, 45 days before that transaction, I actually said, you know what, um, I'm really, I guess, great at building businesses. Why don't I do that for more than just one employer? And I started my own agency called Renowned Talent. Um, and I partner with health systems as well as uh, coding vendors to help them find great talent. So sometimes it's a coder, sometimes it's a data analyst, as an example. Um, been doing that um, for one and a half years and it's going well. Uh, we have no idea what this coronavirus is gonna do, but all I know is, um, um, and it's so crazy because the talk that we're gonna have today, everyone, this could not be more important as having this talk if it makes sense. It's so relevant to today because now they're saying, hey, actually do not go outside right do not gather in groups of people do not go to your association meetings but i'm saying even with all of that we can get connected for renowned career opportunities and i'll explain in a little bit so that's a little bit of my background um and uh how about shannon tell me a little bit about your background where you're from where you're currently working okay i've been at lakeland regional for the last close to six years and i do hospital coding and teach part-time at polk state college the coding program Fantastic. Uh, go to Dorothy. Um, like I said, I'm currently in the corrections field. Um, I've been doing corrections or in the field for about 15 years. Wow. Um, trans I came from another state and uh, relocated to Florida, but definitely with the way society is moving along and um, now being a grandparent, I'm looking more at getting out of the field and, and having a little more flexibility with my career. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you. Rosemary. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I've been in the medical field um, for 30 years. Uh, I started in my um, 20s and uh, been doing medical coding um, in multiple different specialties. Um, okay. Past uh, seven years, I've been with Latham Regional okay. and um, obtained, you know, my certifications um, as needed along the way to advance in my career. Fantastic. And I'm doing remote coding at home. I and I um, appreciate that very much because um, I appreciate working from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what they're saying right now. They're saying it's like, um, for a lot of folks, it's a blessing, right? To now have some flexibility. Yes. Yeah. A lot of us that may be working remote, like I currently work from home as well, running my agency, we are almost built for it. Like we have our dedicated space, we have our, our you know, the kids aren't home kind of thing, but now they've kind of forced everyone back home that may not usually be home. So it's a real adjustment for a lot of people. And, um, you know, I, I think we're gonna be better from this at the at the at the end just for example this zoom call today i mean i've been doing these types of things for a long time especially having video interviews to speed up the process and now it's going to be forced upon people and a lot of hiring managers are going to probably use it moving forward to say hey now we can probably just have a zoom call you know because it if we're not being um you know holding discrimination it really doesn't matter what somebody looks like or and, or anything like that but we want to have that connection. We want to be able to read somebody's face, ask some questions, and also for the candidates as, a, for example, each of you. So I really think that's going to be one definitely positive thing from all of this, from us to really start utilizing technology to help us get there further, faster. You read my mind, exactly what I was just going to say. You have to utilize the technology that's yeah. out there. Uh, and Marissa, you joined a little bit earlier. Yes, hi. Um, I'm actually in childcare right now. I've been a pre-K teacher for about seven, six, seven years. Um, we're actually closed until the 13th, so. Um. That's okay, that's okay. We're, a lot of us are in, uh, are in those shoes right now. Mm -hmm. so. 
um, and you're in this program, so you are looking to do something different in the future, correct? Yes. Um, yes. I'm interested in probably outpatient medical coding, but okay. we'll see. Yes, we will see. We will see. Thank you for joining. And, uh, and Leticia, thanks for joining. Hopefully it's working. Is it working? It's working. Yes. Yes, it's working. See, I'm, <laughs> I've only done this like once or twice and I'm actually a stay at home mom. So I have a one year old puppy and a five year old child making lots of noise. So yes, <laughs> um, yes. I'll probably mute when I can, but I have been a stay at home mom for three and a half years. Before that, I always did billing. I was actually offered a position yesterday at Lakeland Regional Hospital for billing and I tried to turn it down because I can't send my child to childcare right now. <laughs> so oh. um, I would have preferred coding anyways, you know, cause that's, I was trying to get my foot in the door, but um, the billing manager was super nice and it was gonna work out, but there's just, I couldn't send her to childcare right now. So um, they were really nice and they were like, basically they still have a need when I'm ready that they'll, they still want me. So <laughs> okay. we'll see when that comes around. So that's kind of wow. my situation right now. There are a lot of folks that would be so envious of you right now. I'm, I'm yes, we are. You, I mean, <laughs> even on this call, right? Um, but you know what? I would applaud what, you, what you're doing because, I don't know, something weird happens, everyone, when you're in a place of need and you do not almost need something. Has, that, has, has it ever happened to you when you're looking for something, you cannot find it? You know, you went to yes. the store, you saw that dress, that gown, whatever it was, something for your kid. And you're like, oh, I'll get it, you know, in September, you know, before, before Halloween, you know, we're going to make a, a baby shark costume. So I'll, I'll buy it then, you know, I don't need it now. And then you go in September and you cannot find it. It's not on Amazon. It's, it's nowhere. Mm -hmm. Something about when you come from a place of, I don't need it right now. I know I'm going to need it in the future, but you know, I don't need, you even turn it away, more come to you. But in the time that you really need something, you cannot find it. It is the, it, it's, it's probably one of those laws of attraction, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, but um, well, the thing is, I very well may need it because my husband does auto body, so they most likely will get slow and then we'll be hurting. Um, but like Marissa said, I was worried daycares may close, so I didn't want to get in there and have to quit. I'd rather I was like, let me bow out now while I'm in your good graces, <laughs> and hopefully we can pick this up again later. So that's kind of what I chose to do. Absolutely, just maintaining that relationship. Um, I have two. Yes. Little ones. I have a four month old and I have a two year old, and Aww. we were looking Aww. at um, possible options for my two year old, and with this whole thing, we're like. Yeah, no, like, what are we going to do? So um, I definitely understand. And, um, and Lori, all we're doing, we're just doing a slight little intro um, for everyone. Um, I'm not familiar with everyone's background. It's going to kind of help tailor the talk. Um, you can speak and do a short intro if you like, and, um, but you don't have to. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you. We just can't see you. Well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Come on now. No, I can't. I'm on my phone right now because I try to get on my computer and now it's updating. So I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, just but tell I us. Know, I don't know how to show myself on here, honestly. That's okay. Um, no, um, I'm in the food manufacturing. I've been in it for 20 years. Wow. Um, we make vinegar and cooking wine where I work at. Okay. So... I've just wanted a little bit of a change. I have a 15-year-old um, daughter. I wish I'd thought about this sooner because it would have been nice because my idea would have been to work at home. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of still that way a little bit. So I'm just trying testing waters and getting into a new field. And it's definitely a lot different yes. from where I've been. Yes, absolutely. But you know, um, you know, I know a lot of folks talk about jobs going overseas and manufacturing and all of those things, but what we also have to recognize is the rise of clerical jobs that have gone remote. You know, there's so many times you can actually call and maybe like a department store, for example, and they may have a call center, but there's so many times, let's say you're ordering from companies like QVC or home shopping, the person you're speaking to to place your order is actually working from home. Right. You know, so we may, you know, be, be upset about, oh, well, all these jobs went overseas, but also a rise of jobs have gone remote to make it more convenient for all of us. And mm -hmm. I think with this whole thing happening, people are going to have their eyes open like, there's remote work. You can actually work from home, you know, mm -hmm. or my job doesn't require me to be remote or the you know, managers. I don't need to have people in the office, you know, so. I'm really interested to see what the tail end of this is going to look like on all fronts um, for childcare, daycare, I mean, everything, travel. Um, uh, I'm really interested. So um, 
we're all going to be here. But um, I mentioned earlier, I'll, I'm really, you know, and emotionally disappointed not to be able to see each of you face to face today. But maybe we can keep this thing going, and maybe Shannon, we can reschedule for six months or, or from now in the future uh, yeah. to have a to have an onsite. But this works, and this definitely keeps everybody safe. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me dive in. I'm going to jump onto my screen. So I may look technical, technically savvy, but I'm telling you, sometimes it is hard to get these things to work as you like. Uh, Shannon, could I have uh, permissions to record if you wouldn't mind? Sure. Okay. Cool. And I have to share my screen, so. Yeah, Laura, if, I think if you hit the um, video button and... Um, Is it the start I, video? Yes, I'm video on, and... On phone. Let me see. Hmm, let me see. Uh, let me try it and see. Mm -hmm. oh. Let me see. I'm trying to see what... Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna move this. Technology is gonna kill us or make things a lot better. <laughs> Depends on where you go. I have a whole separate talk for that. So um, all I can say is please do not worry or be concerned about stuff being sent over to, uh, to India. Okay, it's, it's really not a huge issue and we can all pivot this is a perfect time to pivot but that's a that's another topic for another day all right so um i uh the best way for me to be able to help and assist you and the reason why i connected with shannon um for us to do this is because i believe ideally us getting connected is the way that we can get everything done um, i remember uh, a few years ago i was looking for someone to cut, cut my grass and if you remember um, we had hurricanes or we had bad storms that year and it rained every single day in florida and i just had a hard time cutting the grass and i was planning to leave for an extended period of time so i was calling around trying to find somebody to cut my grass and of course all the grass guys are busy and i talked to this guy and i got referred to another person and another person and I played that chain like three or four times and I finally found this fantastic lawn guy that's actually in my area. And it's so simple and easy. I can just text him if I don't want my grass to be cut or whatever's going on and he does a fantastic job. That's just one example in my life where being connected gets you opportunities and gets us the people that we need in our lives. And when I was looking for a recruiting position, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate, you're looking to transition from, hey, I'm doing I'm doing manufacturing, I'm working in a, a correctional facility. How can, even with a credential, even with recommendations, how can I get a coding, billing, an HIM related position? How can I be an HIM director? I do not have this prior experience. And I'm, I would like to share with you how getting connected is the best way for us to get those career opportunities. Because, and I have this later in the show, you know, my grandma used to say, it's about what you know. So get your degree, right? But then you graduate and everybody has a degree. Then my mom would say, well, it's more about who knows you, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's more about who knows you. Like you, you and, and I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's also about who you know as well. And what I mean is like, we all know who the presidents are, but does a president know us? Like does a president say, oh, I need somebody for recruitment services. I'm gonna reach out to Bertram. I need somebody for HIM education. I'm gonna reach out to Shannon. I need someone for, <laughs> you know, for correctional facility, health facilitation, operations, Dorothy, right? Like they have to know us, but us just knowing people and random people or people on a very vague level doesn't help us at all. And when you actually go into being a position of asking, right? And I know a lot of times we're very embarrassed to ask, but when you do ask and you said, hey, Shannon, can you help me get connected with this person? I see that, you know, you guys are friends or whatever they don't know you enough so they don't they can't they can't trust you they can't vouch for you and that is exactly what makes a difference the way that i was able to get a recruiting position and i applied for recruiting positions for over three years i was denied within five minutes of every phone conversation Bertram, thank you so much we appreciate your your hustle your bustle all of those things but we require prior experience and i hit a wall i'm like how am i going to get a job how am i going to get a job 
in a moment of frustration, I shared it with a member of the team that I was working on. And I wasn't in recruiting at that time, nothing close, but in healthcare. And she said, hey, my husband works for this company and he needs a really good recruiter. Um, I know you want to work for this company. I really love the company we're working with, but I couldn't get a job there as well doing recruiting. And she said, well, maybe my husband can help you. I spoke with him for 30 minutes. He handed my resume to the hire manager. I didn't know that they were hiring for a recruiter or not. I found out that I had four managers that wanted to hire me. I went for an onsite interview and I got the job. The difference between me just going by myself and actually having someone hand the resume is that without experience, this individual is able to vouch for me. This individual is able to say, hey, you know, I've worked with recruiters. I, I've, I've placed people myself. He was in sales and he was a team leader. And that's the thing. He came from a, a place of authority. He came from a place of trustedness. So when he said, this gentleman doesn't have experience, but I think you should give him a try. I think you should talk to him. It made all of the difference. And each of you and, and a lot of you, you're going to graduate. You're going to have your credentials. You're going to have de your degrees. That is fantastic. But you may hit a wall like I did when people do not know you for that skill set or they do not know you for having or possessing those things. And you may not get the job opportunities. And that's what I'm saying, Leticia, like it's fantastic for you because you at least know that person at that facility, right? And maybe you can reach out to them. Maybe they know somebody else, but still, you're going to be utilizing those connections to get your career opportunities, okay? And just as a little reminder, everyone, let's mute our phones. And if my kids act up by chance, I'll mute as well, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Let's get in the fire. Oh, next slide. So we'll discuss um, the threat to students and new graduates in today's economy. We'll go over a little bit about my background, but I did a slight, slight intro there. We'll also talk about why everyone should get connected and strategies on building connections in any industry. And I'd definitely love to have some questions and answers, okay? Uh, towards the end. Mm -hmm. So anyone a, a fan of 80s, 90s horror movies? Not at all. Okay. No. Well, you may not be a fan, but we all know how it, how it happens, right? You know, the monster comes out and somebody who's, ma who's a jock, who's masculine, you know, hey, I'm going to take this guy and he's swinging and he's punching him. He's doing all these things. And what happens? The monster just chops their head off and it goes spinning, right? <laughs> what happens, unfortunately, to a lot of graduates, and this happened to myself, I graduated in 2007 and I went out to the job market with my marketing degree and I was going to get every single job that I applied to because... Prior to that, I mean, I was flawless, right? Mm -hmm. And the monster being the market just chopped my head off. I could not get a job. And what I realized is it's, it's definitely hard for new graduates to get new opportunities. A year later, I found a marketing position and then I was laid off. A year later, what happened? 2008, right? Mm -hmm. Similar to now. It, it, was mm -hmm. a great, it was a great recession. And Forbes actually released an article that shows new graduates actually have the highest unemployment rate, meaning for new graduates, the employment rate is usually double. So most recently, it was around like 3.6%. Let's just say it was 4%, right? For new graduates, I assure you it's 8%. Because think about it, if everyone in the job market is looking for experience, and then all of these people come to the market with that experience, why are they going to hire us without experience compared to the people that have experience? Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are willing to get paid less or do other, other things, but still it, it's in a place where every position requires experience. And yep. then you're looking at job postings and you're like, Hey, this is a CODA level one position, but you require two years experience mm -hmm. or one year. Like how does that even work? Mm -hmm. But then you realize it usually goes to people who have worked in the field, but maybe they did not have their credential or something like that. And the reason why I actually formulated this talk is because um, I'm connected with in a lot of, HIM related groups and I just kept on seeing people that are willing to quit. They're like, I've tried for two years. I'm, I'm up for renewing my credential, but I haven't been able to find a job. People are leaving the field of HIM because they have a hard time finding positions. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I'm doing this talk, you know, with schools with, and, and with other platforms. I'm actually going to be going to be speaking or I have scheduled um, speaking engagements with Ahima uh, for Tennessee and Minnesota. Those those on-site um, speaking engagements will likely go remote, but I am going to continue pushing because 
the thing is, and I know a lot of people may say, well, hey, everybody knows how to utilize social media. It's not that easy in today's market to, it's easy to get connected, but you have to really be able to leverage those relationships. So this is more of a level one conversation. Maybe if we come on site, we can have level two, like real strategies as to how to do it or how I would do it, et cetera, et cetera. But we have to address the issues at hand, you know? Um, you know, I'm not a, a specialist about, you know, coronavirus, but what do we do? We listen to the specialists in those industries, in those fields with those degrees about how we can battle the disease and how we can keep ourselves safe. And that's why I formulated this talk. Um, and more college graduates are actually likely to be unemployed and underemployed compared to overall workers. And a lot of universities uh, and schools, and not to their fault, right? Like if you have a business school, a cooking school, there's, they're, their specialty is not job placement. But I wish, and this should be a fantastic idea, I wish schools would actually say, hey, we'll give you the education, but you only have to pay us if, we're able to, if you're able to get a job. Because what's the point of us having all of this education, right? And I mm -hmm. think, and, and not just because of everything that's going on right now, but even before that, now we have tools and even some schools or institutions are just gonna be totally online and offer a lot of free stuff. For example, if you want to get some free education from Harvard or Stanford, you can go to their websites and they have free education, recorded sessions that we can actually say we have taken some classes. So the, the platforms are definitely changing how school is going to be probably delivered to our kids or grandkids kind of thing. Um, but I definitely think that there's still a gap there. The gap is how do people get jobs? It's not as easy as before. You have the resume, you apply, you get a call back, you get a face-to-face -face interview. With applicant tracking systems and the way that the system is set up, usually the hiring manager is not even re reviewing the resume. It's usually somebody in recruitment or someone in the HR team. And the thing is, is that that person is not specialized. That person doesn't know mm -hmm. what a HIM professional resume looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I've been blessed to work in the field for close to 10 years. And I can tell you within 10 seconds if that person is a profi coder or a hospital-based coder. It doesn't even take me that long. And I don't, it's not, you can't just look at the credential, you know, but what does that mean? It, it means I've looked at hundreds and thousands of resumes, but if I look at finance resumes and sales and recruit, like if you look at all these resumes, you, your, your eye doesn't get trained like that. Okay. So that's also an issue that we have. So outside of the curriculum, we just end up you know, entering the job market and just having a really rude awakening. So that's why I want to help um, each of you today. And you know, really the, the best thing that all, all of you are going to walk away um, from this call is that you're going to have another connection. You know, I've had the chance to speak with each of you and stuff and towards the end of the call, I'm definitely going to love to get connected with you. And if you start to face some challenges, I would love to just offer you some free advice in my, in my free time as to how you can go ab about it. I hope that is not the case. I am not wishing evil for anyone. If you can graduate or have your credential and get a job, let me know so I can con congratulate you. I really want to do that. But if you're having a hard time, let's talk out through some strategies and some things that you can do to help you get placed. Okay. So I talk about, I talked about this, so I'll just go over and, um, and skip over. So in today, our population is around, what, 7.6, uh, almost 8 billion. And for unique mobile users, we have over 5 million, all right? That's over 60% of people that have mobile phones. Interesting thing that you may not know, in South Korea, actually more people apply to jobs on their phones than on their desktops. Hmm. They're not even utilized. And, and that's the thing, like, I don't even know how to send somebody a resume from my phone. But somehow in Korea, they got it. Hmm. So you can see where we are moving. Okay? Yeah. And like, and think about it. Before, like if you wanted to have your own little um, TV and news program, I was talking to my wife about this yesterday, you need to have an, a, a, a whole studio, right? You need to have a sound man and a boom man and, and editors and everything. Now you can go on Facebook, YouTube Live, just on your phone. Mm -hmm. And whoever wants to watch can watch. And it can be shown around the world, whether you're in Korea or Australia or America. Mm -hmm. So the power of this little thing is definitely helping us. And the nice thing that I love about these mobile phones, and that's why I think this is more powerful even than the computer, are the apps that we can use. Now we have this thing called social media that you can click into and you can connect with people. You can reach out to people, whether they're billionaires or people on the other side of the tracks, like you can reach out and get connected with people. And I'm telling you, I am always in 
<laughs> in the LinkedIn app. And on Facebook, I'm usually on the professional side, connecting with people and helping them with jobs and stuff. But this also is a very powerful tool. So today we're going to be, we're going to be talking about how we can leverage social media to get connected. And that's why I said earlier, that's why right now is a most important time for us to get connected because now we are forced. We cannot go to an AHIMA meeting. We cannot go to a, like you cannot go to those meetings. Those meetings are being canceled, rescheduled or whatever happens. Mm -hmm. And, and it's also about a popular term right now in business. It's also about branding. It's also about who knows you and how they know you. And it doesn't mean like each of you have to do like me. Like I actually produce some content. I post some videos. I have a little YouTube channel, whatever. It doesn't mean you have to do that, like be on podcasts, but you can have a really professional LinkedIn profile. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can occasionally comment and connect with people. And then over time within that industry, you will start to see job postings. And usually the hiring managers will even comment and say, Hey, if you happen to know somebody that's interested, apply to this link and you'll be smart and you will not apply to the link, but you'll actually connect directly with that manager and say, Hey, Shannon, um, I live local to Lakeland and I see that you're hiring. Um, I'll, I'll love to, to, to either meet with you, take you out to coffee, just learn a little bit more about the position. I do not want to be like everybody else. I just apply to a job. I, I really want to know and learn your culture and I'd love to buy you a coffee sometime. Those little things I'm telling you makes all of the difference. And you meet that person and they say, Hey, um, like Rosemary, I got a dog. So if you see dog here on me, like I apologize. And you go to the interview and you bring some greenies dog treats. And he does say, hey, you know, I'm not buying my way into, in, into the company, but since I connect with you and you have a dog, I, like my dog loves these, I'm, I'm sure your dog will love them. Is that okay? Sure, thank you so much. And then you get home and then you send a, a thank you email. You know what, no matter what happens, I just really appreciate being connected with you. And if we can't work together now, we may work together in the future. And you just leave it up to the, to the universe, right? You just leave it up to the man upstairs. And then you may get a call back that you got the job. It's about going around those steps and doing it that way really helps us because they're connected. And as we think about it, we all want to work, talk and have lunch and meet with people that we know people that are like us. And some people call it fraternization, specialization, any of those things. And all I'm saying is we're all we're asking is for an equal opportunity to apply. For example, the recruiting job that I got, if they said, hey, Bertram, we can't hire you here, but you know, we can give you a job that's more lead generation, not recruiting, but working your way up to be a recruiter, maybe within a year to two years, I still would have got taken the job because I just needed the opportunity to prove myself. And that's mm -hmm. all that we're asking for. We're not asking, hey, if somebody's more qualified, hire me instead of them. No, 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 we're not saying that. But what we're saying is, hey, I would like you to know me more than a resume. And that my biggest thing about applicant tracking systems and the reason why we all use them because we have to, we have to store the information somehow. And what happens is when you apply online, it pulls that information to start your onboarding, the correct spelling of your name, your I-9, W-4, W-9, whatever, all of those things, all of the, the back ends, your benefits, it starts all of that. So I get it and I understand, but what if you did not put your CCS or a credential or some education or you uploaded it, but it didn't take to the system. It didn't show in the system they're not going to say, oh, I thought Shannon has her, her RHIT and, and CCS, but I do not see it on here. So they'll just pass. But if they know you, or if you were presented by a recruiter or somebody like that, they're gonna say, oh, can you check and just, and just make sure? And actually me, myself, with my candidates, I always verify experience. Hey, do you have this? Do you have this? And we go through all of those things, right? The applicant tracking system, it does have the capability to do it because there are usually so many people and the managers are almost in dismissive mode. This person's not a fit, this person's not a fit, this person's not a fit. They just end up doing that rather than reaching out and confirming. So that's why I'm talking about having the connections and people really knowing you for that specialty or what you have or the stage that you're in in your career. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to have a very level one conversation about how we can build connections. So <laughs> There's this little tool or this website called LinkedIn and I truly love it. And LinkedIn, unlike Facebook and some others, is more of a professional networking site. So does everybody, you can just put your hand up. Does everybody have a LinkedIn profile? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So Dorothy, you do not have a LinkedIn profile, and that's okay. But we're gonna help you. Because the thing is, is, and Shannon, um, has anyone been hired at the facility recently? At Lakeland Regional? Yeah, like within the last year. Oh yeah, well, several of my students have been hired on at that's Lakeland good. Regional's Code Reach Sale. I, I, actually, I've had seven, eight, about nine of them in the last year. That is fantastic. Yeah. But for the other folks that didn't happen to know these individuals, what is the very first thing that they did? Well, the first thing that they did, they Googled the name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they went in and they said, hey, who is this gentleman, Bertram Lansico? Like, like, like what is his deal? Who is, this, who, who is this guy? And then Google is a library of the internet, if you didn't know, mm -hmm. shows shows us it shows who we are mm -hmm. and linkedin is great because and this is the reason why i would love for each of you especially you dorothy to utilize um profiles like linkedin okay everyone please listen up and this is very important because on linkedin and these types of social media platforms you control the narrative doesn't make sense you control the narrative if there's another gentleman or person named bertram okay when they just did a Google search, or let's say my name was John Smith, and this, this gentleman, let's just say it was African-American that lives in Clearwater, but it's not me. They may have thought, hey, a criminal record came up. I, can't, I, I don't want to work with somebody who's been a criminal or, or has been arrested. But when you go on and you put that, hey, I work at this company and this is who I am, et cetera, et cetera, Google does a little snapshot. It categorizes it, and you control the narrative. You're able to say, hey, I am really Bertram, and this is who I am, and oh yeah, this is the gentleman that I talked to, and this is his picture, and okay, this looks nice. Let's see what he does. Oh, he went to USF, and let, let's, let's go through, and oh, I see that he, you know, he speaks, and he has a video series, and he's a recruiting manager, and you know, he has, um, you know, I don't know where it shows on here. He has an, over 100 endorsements for recruiting. Okay, may, maybe he knows what he knows. You're able to control the narrative. You're able to represent yourself in the best light. And what I like about this is, I know that it hasn't caught up in, in America, but in other countries, especially in Asia, having a, a picture on a resume is a very standard process. But that is something based upon our discrimination, laws and clauses and all that things, I don't think it's gonna take in America. But we all do not mind seeing who we're gonna to talk to or, or the people that we're gonna work with. Mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. thought it was very interesting, Shannon, that you put my picture in the, in the invite that we mm -hmm. sent to everybody. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, but we, we, we kind of are interested and we know we shouldn't. We, we shouldn't be interested, but we are interested, right? And the picture's mm -hmm. there and okay, and, but we're gonna look at it. Like it's, it's, it's a very weird connection. But once we see that, we feel connected already. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. um, I was true. on a WebEx and it wasn't working, but my profile, like picture showed up, this very one here, that's in the circle. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, that's not, that's not a bad picture. It represents me in a professional way, so it's okay. I, I couldn't get the video to work. I didn't want to keep people, so we just got started. But even they know, and all these companies, they know that this is very, this is very useful. You know? And for anybody who has grandkids, right? And maybe they do not live close to you, what do you do? You have FaceTime with them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like pick up what I'm putting down, you know, it, it's all about having that connection and putting ourselves out there and what tends to happen. And quite honestly, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this call or, or this talk to recruit each of you. Right. But what I'm saying is just knowing that person just helps us so much and having that connection. And that's why, like, for me, I, I'm definitely implementing video into my business any which way that I can, because it just helps us get connected. It's going to help people that need the jobs to get the jobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So having a profile, putting your information out there. And you know, the funny thing about this, this is, this is, you know, this is a complete profile that I did myself over time. You don't have to do all of this. It doesn't have to be fancy, but us just copying and pasting information from our resume helps out a lot. And that's all you really do here. You just put a few like four, four sub bullet points about your job or what you have done or for you, Dorothy, right? You're going to be, you're going to be, going from one industry to the next you want to put the bullet points even on your resume you want them to be relevant to if it's hrm encoding i'm just guessing towards hrm encoding okay mm -hmm. so what's very important in 
in, in the justice system that can be very critical for coding. And what I'm thinking about is productivity. What I'm thinking about is accuracy, right? We don't want to have the wrong John Doe in a, in a, in a prison cell, a jail cell, right? That's going to be an issue. We don't want the, the person with the, the wrong dietary needs. I think it was Lori, right? We, don't want the, we do not want the wrong, the wrong vinegar in the wrong sauce, right? Like mm -hmm. if you have these skills and you need to realize, hey, what translates from what I'm doing right now to where I want to be? And when I wrote my resume, when I wasn't a recruiter, that's exactly what I did. I was doing um, billing enrollment. Imagine this, ladies and gentlemen. I was doing billing enrollment for doctors. All the doctors that we have at the hospitals, they have to have um, their forms signed, send copies of their credentials mm -hmm. to the, the payers. And I was a gentleman that was chasing the doctors, sometimes literally chasing. I would go to hospitals sometimes, smelling the blood in the ER, everything. Hey, I just need you. one signature or sometimes it was 20 signatures. Super simple. We paid FedEx, we did everything. And it got to a point that I just used to cold call them and they would get annoyed sometimes. And they'll say, Bertram, I know why you're calling. I will send in the mail tomorrow. I said, thank you. <laughs> um, but the point was, what I did was I put on my resume, I have cold calling experience. These doctors at first didn't know me cold email, cold outreach for recruiters and for what salespeople do. That is a very important skill set. You, you need to be very comfortable to talk to people you've never talked to before. Mm -hmm. So having that connection, getting referred, having the desire and all of that helps. But also I believe me in translating from what I'm doing to what I want to do also helps as well. Yep. Transferable skills. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what I love about LinkedIn right now for each of you, and this is, we can table this for another time. You can actually show recruiters that you're open to job opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is this little tab and because of the privacy rules, I do not know if I can do this, but there's a, this little thing called LinkedIn recruiter that recruiters like myself have to pay very handsomely for, but we can use this tool to help us see who's open for opportunities. Prior to that, it's very manual. So if I'm looking for, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, outpatient coder in Lakeland. It is gonna show me these individuals, right? But what happens is this is only based upon people that I'm connected with and it's only based on level of connection. But when I use the LinkedIn recruiter tool, it shows me everyone and allows me to message any of those individuals. Okay. So Dorothy, if you're looking for opportunities, right? And you, let's say, um, I, I'm not exactly sure, but let's just say you live in Lakeland. Okay. I want to get opportunities or I live in Lake, Lake Wales or I'm moving to a new, uh, moving to a new place. You can actually identify yourself as somebody who's moving or somebody who's going to be in that area. And I am open to opportunities. Back in 2007, that wasn't an option for us. 2008. So even though you may have been looking for an opportunity and LinkedIn was, was, was back, it was available back then, but not to the degree and not to the recruiter usage level that it is today, not to the connections and the videos and all of those things, right? It was just more, Hey, you can be connected with people and that's it. But now it's, it's definitely utilized as a tool. And the nice thing about LinkedIn in America is that stats have shown that over 70% of hiring decision makers, and business owners are listed on LinkedIn. They have profiles. And the crazy thing is that these business owners, millionaires, billionaires, they message and they take control of the platform themselves. So they may have a social media manager that helps them post and stuff, but they will occasionally message on systems, okay? Um, I don't wanna take up too much time. Where are we? We're at 45, okay. Anyway, let me go to, let me just go into, let me just continue on because I can get, I can get lost and then my, my house is a mess. The kids are up and all these things. So, so. Yeah, so, that's, that's, so, funny, you don't even know. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so the first thing that we do is that we create a profile. Okay. And then you get connected with people that you know, that's okay. a, that's the very first thing. There's actually tools within LinkedIn that will say, Hey, um, do you want us to use your email address or scan your contacts or your phone to see who you, who's already on here? Yes, of course. I like to do that. Okay. They're not going to message them, spam them, any of those things. Okay. You get connected with all those people and then you get connected with people that you would like to know. Recruiters, hiring managers, decision makers in your industry. Think as high up as the CEO and president of AHIMA. 
because what happens is if you're connected with that individual, everybody that they're connected with becomes a second connection. And when I want to reach out to you, I will see that you're connected with those people. So we're just following the circle, everyone. It's all about who you know and who knows you. And I actually go in and I have a daily practice to go in and get connected with 10 people every single day. I go here and I just start clicking on people that I would like to get connected with. Some of these people I've worked with, some of these people that I used to work with. And LinkedIn has a funny way of figuring, hey, both of you have actually worked at the same company around the same time within coding. Mm -hmm. You may know these people. And what you do, you just slowly build up your connections. And the difference between LinkedIn to Facebook is that Facebook is about people who you only know and want to know their personal lives. LinkedIn, I'm not going to see if you've had a baby or any of those things. So just get connected with everybody. This is about job opportunities. This is about your future. This is about you running for president one day, okay? Or first lady, everyone. So it's going to benefit you to get connected with people that you know or, or people that you do not know in your industry. And there's some millionaires and they have some very famous quotes. One of them that I like to, I like to repeat, and don't take this the wrong way, but is that, Strangers have everything that we look, that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Strangers have everything that we're looking for. And what it means is that let's say I'm going to start a business, right? All of the strangers are my future customers. Let's say I'm starting a lawn company, right? All of the houses I do not know or do not have permission to cut their grass are going to be my future customers. So mm -hmm. me just saying, I'm only going to cut people's grass to people that I know, they may not need their grass cut. When my neighbor, or sorry, two neighbors down, the, per, the, the John Doe that just moved in, that doesn't, I don't know, that might be my next customer. So you have to leverage LinkedIn as, hey, it's not just about people that I, that I know, but it's people that I want to know and get to know one day. And a lot of people that I've met, because I also attend the HEMA shows, um, when it's beneficial for me, my company, and it's able for my family, and they'll say, Bertram, I, I, I know you, I've heard about you. Even before I started posting video content and all of these things, I would message people and they would say, Bertram, I've heard, I've heard about you. And I, I, I mean, I don't know how they did, but maybe I recruited somebody or, or I worked with someone or maybe we were in tight negotiations and I didn't know and they happened to hear, yeah, I'm working with Bertram over at this company. So it's all about, it, it, it all kind of like winds in together and you end up, and it's such a small world, everyone. Yes. It's such a small world. So it's just about being connected and putting yourself out there. And be active. So when you see somebody is posting a job, when you see somebody is actually doing something that you like, just like on Facebook, like, oh my goodness, oh, your daughter is so cute. You do the same thing on LinkedIn. Oh, that's so fantastic. Congratulations on that award. Congratulations on that promotion. Oh, uh, I'm striving to be an impatient medical coder like yourself. And we're gonna go to the next step. Building and taking those connections offline. We all underestimate the power of networking in face. I know right now we cannot do it. And that's why a lot of people are hurting. It's not just about having talks at the water cooler, but I'm talking about when you're actually able to talk to that person face to face, you find out so much and you learn so much about them. And I know within HIM, things are changing. Now, everything in HIM was going remote. And a lot of people took that as, hey, well now I'm not gonna have to see people anymore. Their HIM companies, they're conducting more and more video interviews, even before this whole corona thing. And they're also doing video weekly meetings or monthly meetings with their team. Mm -hmm. They're also realizing the power of video and the power of video connection. And at the end, for them, and I've talked to the HRM business leaders while they're doing it, they said, hey, Bertram, we want our people to know us. We also want to know them. And they want to know that we care and we can have those connections. At first, it's awkward because we're all remote and all of a sudden it's like, yes, I, I am in my bed or I'm in my son's bedroom and we're talking. And then it turns into, we, it, I, I happen to know Bertram at a deeper level. I happen to know him a little bit better. You know? and, these, and these calls are scheduled. So these managers don't, don't just call people randomly to see them or their hair messed up or, you know. <laughs> when... I mean, the, the challenge of working from home, everyone, I would say, is not getting the work done, is brushing your teeth before 12 o'clock sometimes, if you know what I'm saying. So, <clears throat> and um, some of the folks you know or would like to know only connect with people that they generally know. I happen to know this manager that I was working with, helping <coughs> him um, hire for his, uh, for his team. And I'm telling you, he was not the nicest person to work with. But when I actually saw him at a company function face to face, I'm not going to say he broke down, but he was like, he was like a teddy bear. 
he was big, but he wasn't mean <laughs> and he was nice. And we, we, after that, we've never had any conflict because we only communicated with each other via email. So it was always mm -hmm. cold, very short. No, you know, buy this book. You don't know what I'm looking for to, yeah, I, I happen to know and connect with Bertram now. And I'm sure now he also sees and recognizes me as well too. You know, yes, he could have gone to my LinkedIn profile, et cetera, et cetera. But having the actual face-to-face one-on-one conversation definitely sealed the deal. So some of the managers and HM directors who you're looking to connect with for hopefully in the future to get a job opportunity, you're likely going to run into those individuals at these shows. They do it also for networking too, because they're, they're trying their best to be connected with vendors and some of the vendors treat and spoil them and take them out to dinners and stuff. So definitely mm -hmm. taking those relationships offline is a very powerful tool that everybody uses. Um, and um, another thing, you know, another big thing about us getting connected, uh, Forbes um, did a study and you can Google this if you like. And it said that over 70% of job opportunities are not posted. I mean, think about it. When's the last time you saw a CEO or CFO or CCO job opening? <laughs> you know, yeah. when, 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 um, when the, C the CEO and founder Steve Jobs founded um, Apple and then he was, you know, on his deathbed about to pass away, you know, great and amazing, inspiring man. But then all of a sudden you hear about this guy named Tim Cook. I didn't know who Tim Cook was, but if you talk to the, to the individuals at, at um, Apple, they know Tim Cook very well. And he was very renowned for being a very thought, inspirational leader at the company. So that job was not posted. So a lot of jobs are not posted. And the reason why is because they have somebody in mind. So they may post a job eventually, they may interview a few people, but they know they're gonna give that job, for example, to Tim Cook. LinkedIn recently changed their management. Um, a um, gentleman named Jeff Weiner was the um, founder of LinkedIn CEO, all of those things chairman. Um, he's stepping down from the CEO, he's just gonna be chairman, and another gentleman um, was hired. I was at the LinkedIn office in San Francisco and I asked my contact, I said, hey, who's, who is that guy that just got the position? Congratulations to him, all those things. And she said, yeah, he's been doing awesome work and he works on this team and he's actually the best person to take us to the next level. Since we are now acquired by Microsoft, every, people know who, the, who these individuals are. So even when they get the job, you know how people can say, oh, oh my goodness, discrimination, why wasn't the job posted? They don't say anything because they say in themselves, yeah, he's the best or she's the best person to, to be in that position, okay? So you have to, it's all about having that connection and knowing people. So when they're looking to actually create that and start that recruiting team, they can reach out to you. That's actually how I got my second recruitment job. Um, a gentleman referred me and they said, this is one of the best recruiters I've, ever, I, I've known. You wanna hire this guy and the job was not posted. And they reached out to me, Birch, and we wanna hire you. And I said, no, I, I'm not going anywhere. And we had enough talks and they talked me <laughs> out of my original decision. So just having a really good career and also just knowing people is going to help us um, get those connections and opportunities. So you're ready to make a career change. Be patient, be professional, and be persistent. So being patient, just knowing that it's going to take time. You know, you, you can have, and I, and I had a very powerful resume. The same resume that was denied over three years to the one that got me the job was the same resume. But I was patient with that resume because I had many people within my industry, family, review and give me tips on my resume and I just try my best to make it as perfect as possible. But you can almost think as, I sh you should quit because you haven't gotten a job with that same resume. It doesn't mean that the resume is bad. It may just be the, not the right opportunity for you, okay? Being professional, I think, goes a long way. When you're applying for jobs and stuff, like I've shown up to job opportunities or interviews and they did not interview me. They almost treated me like I am in the wrong department kind of thing, okay? Being professional always helps because if you say or do something or post something, it can always be held against you in the future. Right mm -hmm. now, as a recruiter, one of my frustrations is I try to do my best to help people with job opportunities, but they didn't work out a two weeks notice as an example. So when they try to go and apply for the next job, I get a very quick response, Bertram, we will not consider this, this person, thank you. And what I realized was, they've probably burnt a bridge. And now that bridge is burnt at a, actually another organization. And you know what, if you happen to leave a position and that manager lights, t burns a bridge, you know, that, that's, that's on them. But usually it's something that that person has done. Um, and that's from me just kind of trying my best to dig in to find out a little bit more about why that happened or, or, or what has happened. 
And I've also worked with coding professionals and sometimes people think like, well, it's just a remote world and they don't really know my face. So I'm just going to do it. People remember names. Yeah, your name may not be Bertram Lansico. You know, that's pretty unique, but people remember names. So you always want to be professional and just be persistent. You know, I, I would highly encourage you. And as I said earlier, I don't want it to be, um, I don't want anything bad to happen to any of us, right? I want us to just apply and get the first job and just for us to have these amazing careers. But you have to be persistent. I've even talked to nursing students that I actually placed and got nursing jobs, right? And I'll talk to them like, wow, you got a nursing job. Like, wasn't it so easy? I heard that there's a nursing shortage. And you know what the person told me? She, she said, no. I worked at the hospital and I had to wait six months after I actually graduated and finished all of my all the things that I need to do to be a nurse. How, she had her license, everything. It, took, it still took her six months. So even with a nursing shortage, it's gonna take a nurse at least six months to get a job. And all I would say um, to being persistent, you have to realize why the creator of the universe put that job in your heart. You know, um, when, I, when, I, when I was looking to start my agency, I didn't wanna leave my company. Made the most money I've ever made, job security, work or remote. There are not a lot of recruitment managers that work remote and all those things. Um, I travel sometimes when my company allowed me to travel across the country whenever I needed to. And something said, Le leave that job. And then I left and then 45 days later, the company got sold. You have to realize like, some, like something's gonna happen in the, in the future and that's exactly why the creator put something in your heart to be an HIM professional as an example, a recruiter. So you just have to be persistent to find out exactly why. And then when my son was born, second, you know, my daughter and all these things and like everything that's happening now, I am so glad I made that decision mm -hmm. because I couldn't see the future, but that person or the man of stairs already did. Okay, we're wrapping up to the question and answers. So this is a time for each of you, if you have something um, that you like to ask, I'll definitely love to answer it. But before we go then, let's do this, okay? My gift to each of you is a free resume or LinkedIn profile critique. Even if you do not have a LinkedIn profile and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to create one. I don't want to reach out to Bertram. And Bertram, can you take a look at my profile? Um, I'm more than willing to, in my free time, to kind of help you or give you any tips to help you have an all-star profile or a good resume. Okay, so reach out to me um, by next week, Monday. Not, not the next 24 hours, I'm sorry. And just send me a message with the phrase, hashtag be renowned. Hashtag be renowned. So why, why be renowned? Because... It's not just about us doing a job. And this is why we don't remember the, the person that sat next to us or behind us in class or in college, you know, or high school years ago, because that person wasn't renowned. But why do we still remember the, the prettiest girl, the, the cutest guy, the jock, prom king, prom queen, all these things, because they were renowned. They were good at least something, right? Best dress, worst dress, you know, all of those things, the, the practical jokers in class. We remember those people because they did something that we happen to remember. And I would just love each of you to be empowered to when you're actually ready to start working, that you're not just going to be a billing clerk or a medical coder or an HCC manager. You're going to be one of the best managers that you can be. What helped me being a really good recruiter was I told myself, it took me three years to get this job. I'm going to do the, the very best that I'm going to do at this job. I worked 12 hour days out of passion, not because they asked me to. The, the, office, the office opened at seven. I was at work at seven and I worked till five and then I would go home and I would do more work at home because I was just passionate about recruiting and I wanted to not just prove to anyone out there, but I wanted to prove to myself why I should be a recruiter and it paid off dividends. So you just have to be really passionate. You have to be renowned and you have to realize if you do a really good job, it's going to lead you to having continued job opportunities in the future. That's true. I always encourage my students to try to get experience while they're going to school so they don't have such a hard time getting their foot in the door when they've got their certification. That always helps. Yeah. If you can get a job, it's mm -hmm. going to be a big help because that's the wall that a lot of HM professionals are running into. You do not have experience. And then it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? So, okay. Um, any, um, any questions that I can hopefully answer? No I'll ask one. Oh, okay. someone else go first. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I, I, I don't have a question, but I certainly appreciate the fact that you would take time from your busy schedule to review my profile on LinkedIn and uh, offer me some credible advice. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. And like, what I realized and my pain, I didn't want to be anybody else's pain. So I told myself, and you cannot do this when you work for a company or organization, especially in HR and, and recruiting, they can't do anything because anything they do is a direct representation of the company. Mm-hmm. During political times, somebody liked a post by one of the candidates and that person was asked to unlike and do not talk about those things. Like they look at us like a hawk, you know? So one of the things in, in the, my privilege is to, to help everybody because I don't want anybody to go through what I went through. Why would you have the degree, but you cannot get a job because you don't have experience? Like that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. And it's even bad um, on an internship level. Some people get an internship for these banks and then they can't even get a job at the same bank that they got the internship at. Does that make any sense? Like it's, there's a big, big, big catch 22 out there with this whole experience thing. So I'm just trying my best to help and educate everyone so we can get out there and get the jobs. But Rosemary, thank you. And, um, and it's my pleasure. So Leticia, you up. Um, so like I said, I've been a stay at home mom the last three and a half years. That was completely my choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do have a lot of good experience, so that's helpful. But one thing I've always wondered is like listing it on a resume or like even on LinkedIn, like again, I've been a stay at home mom by choice, but also my big thing is while I have been a stay at home mom, I've stayed active through like volunteering. Once my daughter did start preschool, I volunteer there and I volunteer now that she's in kindergarten. So I like Mm -hmm. always wanted to try to list that on there so that they know, like I stayed active and you know, and that sort of thing. But like how to list that is like, so that I could definitely probably use your help, especially on that. Yeah, we can probably do table that to more one-on-one, but for everyone to hear, LinkedIn is a little interesting because they'll have a place where you can put volunteer experience or you can mm-hmm. actually list it as like a job experience, or it may, be, um, it may be better to list it as you were a student going to this college, getting trained within HIM, and you have those transferable skills like Shannon mentioned, so they can see that and say, oh, well, this is what they've been doing. They haven't been, right. you know, stay-at-home mom watching Power Rangers. They've been yeah. actively getting Does it work that way? <laughs> and, and, you know, well, I mean, I, I, I am, we're, we're, we, like, I'm the pastor. You're, like, the pastor's wife kind of thing. Like, you know, <laughs> like, we, we know exactly what we're going through because, like, when they're watching TV, we're doing something else, right? Right. So, <laughs> yeah. but, 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 um, but the whole big thing about experience and the reason why it, it covers and carries so much weight is because the managers want to know that you've been involved and you're doing it right now. Mm-hmm. It, it's all about having recent su- success. And I don't know my, 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 the realtor that we used to buy our house. A lot of times I felt like we were her first client because I almost didn't feel like she had the skills to get the, get the, get the house sold or us sold to a house. But once she had her first or her first year of selling experience, I'm sure she was a lot more proficient than when she was with us, you know, viewing or pulling listings for 70 houses, you know? But just having that recent experience carries so much weight. And Leticia has billing experience too, so. That's good. That, you know, it, get her foot back in the door with that. If she can't get a coding job or off the bat, at least she can get her foot in the door that way and move up. Leticia, my question, and um, I hope you don't mind me asking, with the way that things are going right now, wouldn't it be beneficial somehow to figure out if you can do that job remotely? Well, that was a potential. Like, it may have gotten to that. But, um, like they said, I could. And they also warned me that I may be... um, like in the hospital asking, like with everything going on, I may be asking people come in the door, like basically Corona questions, like survey oh questions. Goodness. And I was like, mm. okay. the heads up. And I thought, uh, I don't know if that's really what I want to get into right now, but I mean, I get that that's what they mean. But yeah, I mean, I think I just, I, I'm definitely like, I only have one child, so I'm like helicopter mom. And so I was just more where I, I worried too much probably. And yeah. so I, I was very worried about what's going to happen. And like I said, I was more worried that I'd have to quit and then, then I'd burn that for it. You know, not necessarily burn it, but I understand. I'd rather stay in their good, their good graces right now. You know, um, the thing with, um, the thing with us and, and our kids is, um, and I respect that because no one can tell me, tell you when it's the right time. You know, my mom was talking to uh, my wife, like, 
you know, you're, you're treated like a baby and all this stuff. And, you know, she, my mom wants to give her, give him ice cream and all this stuff, our first one. And, you know, I agree with my wife that it's like, they're never going to be this way again. You know, like they're, they're changing. And once they get into school or whatever, like whenever you decide to send them to school kind of thing, like that's that. So your career can always restart, you know, like, let's say you, you, you take a three-year break or you decide to take a four-year break. You can get a job at either one. And now is probably like the best excuse, you know, why, why haven't you worked in a year? Corona. <laughs> you know, you don't have to explain like, oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I went to the store to do a return and it's been like overdue. And, and I said, man, with everything going on and the guy's like, yeah, don't, don't mention it. Man. Like oh, <laughs> you don't have to say anything right now. I, I got to drop off a return for Amazon and then they haven't said anything, but if they say, why haven't you returned it? Corona. You yeah. <laughs> trying to make a light of a heavy situation. Yes, but, um, we have to, <laughs> you know, it's, it's probably a it's probably a good time, but yeah, just just take your time. But what we can do before then is make sure that your resume is strong, your profile is strong, and you know you you just reaching out for you know remote opportunities, you know yeah so, true or even just something part time or whatever. So um, yeah. when it comes to when it comes to just getting that first bit of experience, I tell people do whatever you have to. And some people mm -hmm. have just to have one year of experience, they have driven an hour and a half one way to come back and, you know, and do all those things. So it's really just about putting ourselves out there and getting it on the resume. So you have it, you know, and, and that like, was me. Cause I actually live near Tampa. So okay. <laughs> I just like Polk state. So that's why I make the drive. But, and that's why I try to tell all my classmates, like no one's called me for coding period. It's just because of my billing experience that I got mm -hmm. that call. So, okay. you know, but I knew it would be a foot in the door. But I would Absolutely. definitely much rather work closer to home. But Absolutely. Okay. Um, is, if Lori's still on the line, I'm not too sure if you had a, um, a question. <laughs> I'm still here. Um, not at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm still trying to, like I said, feel myself around with everything. Um, I still have a lot to learn, actually. So... Mm -hmm. Oh. It's been an experience, especially when you're not been in that kind of field at all. Yes. Um, so it's a big learning curve. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you're ready, you know, let's uh, let's connect and let's let's move forward. Okay. I appreciate well, your time. Um, oh yeah, I appreciate you as well. So, um, any other uh, last questions or comments? Um, there, there is a learning um, item on. LinkedIn where you can learn more skills like computer skills like Excel, Word, PowerPoint and mm -hmm. that would be really good for y'all to consider too because that skill you can put on LinkedIn and because and, coders use Excel a lot mm -hmm. so when you have those skills that stands out to the recruiters as well. Shan, are, you, are you talking about the skills and endorsements? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I'm looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Ladies and I gentlemen, actually, LinkedIn just announced that um, there are parts of those learning center, the learning center that you have to pay for since mm -hmm. this whole Corona thing is going on. They've actually made that free. Oh, wow. So if there's something that you need that they would usually charge for right now, it's free. Mm -hmm. And quick story, okay. I needed to get somebody a job. I worked with her, with her for six months. I asked a special favor from a hiring manager. She could have got the job if, if she just had this one skill. And guess what it was? It was Excel. Mm -hmm. And she said she didn't have it. But Bertram, we actually had an after work, one hour on-site training that I did not attend because I wanted to go home to my kids. She could have got that job if she just stayed one extra hour at work on a Friday. Was I able to get her a job? Yes, a little bit later. But it just, it just taught me, like I, I took Excel for granted because I got it in like high school and college and stuff. But if you do not have some of those skills or even like just other ones that you know, your employer provides, or even mm -hmm. right now, you can right now just Google, sorry, YouTube search, how to use Excel, how to do this. I do videos, mm -hmm. I learned everything up for my videos on YouTube. This is another one that I just bought from Office Depot. It teaches you Excel, Word, um, PowerPoint, Access, Outlook, and Publisher. And it's like $25 at, at um, Office Depot. 
and it's go. interactive so it's at your own pace they do something then you do it so it's hands-on well that's kind of like the class that we're in right now shannon um yes. that a lot of us had to take now i know letitia didn't have to take it because she already had it but um the computer class that we're required to take is the whole micro office suite right that's very good because once you get out there in the working world that's all that they use so okay uh, marissa any questions um no but i do appreciate your time all right thank you thank you all right everyone i'm going to run it was thank really you. a blessing and i'm looking thank at you. uh you know maybe after this whole thing that we can possibly schedule or just meet on, yeah. on on side or i don't know at a show or something we'll we'll figure it out but i'll stay in touch with shannon yeah. and please reach I out to me on linkedin time. let's uh let's get connected everyone okay thank, thank you so much you. bertram appreciate yeah. it all right thank you thank have you. a good one thank you, bertram you too bye-bye bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.